Welcome to NewOrleansSaints.com. I'm John DeShazer, Senior Writer, and we are joined today by Saints General Manager Mickey Loomis. Now, we're a couple of months into the COVID-19 pandemic, and Mickey, how are you holding up right now? Uh, I'm just fine. Look, we've got uh, we've got it easy compared to, uh, you know, a lot of folks. So, um, you know, we get to spend a lot of time with the kids, uh, get to do a little schoolwork with them, although that's finally over. Um, and we're just rolling along like everyone else, waiting for the uh, world to open up. How has it been for you operationally during the pandemic? Now, obviously, it's not business as usual, and yet you guys are expected to conduct business as usual. Well, you know, look, first, first, the first part of it, we were in draft preparation and in the draft. And, and uh, look, that went about as well as we could hope for, um, given the conditions. And then, uh, you know, since then, it's been more, you know, project oriented. Um, you know, we've had some, uh, uh, a couple things with the team. Fortunately for us, um, this is normally a pretty slow time in the off season outside of the, uh, uh, the off season program for the players. How much time have you all spent figuring out how to approach things going into the future? And is that a pretty fluid situation? Well, I think that's pretty fluid until we get, you know, a little more direction from the league. Look, we're all in a wait and see mode, uh, uh, you know, see where this, uh, um, where this virus and, and how we handle it, uh, how, where that goes in terms of just the rest of the world. And, and uh, you know, fortunately, we have some time to do that. And look, I know that at the league office, they're spending a lot of time uh, on different scenarios, but uh, we've got time yet. Now, the Saints off-season program was canceled. The team won't meet again until training camp. Is there a vision of how that might look in terms of interaction with fans, interaction with players, or again, is that something that remains fluid also? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, listen, there's been a lot of discussion both internally and externally about about what that's gonna look like when we when we do have training camp. And, and I would say this, right now, we're planning on having our normal training camp. Um, what that looks like in terms of the logistics um, and, and what is different from normal, we don't know yet, but we're having discussions about that. Um, obviously, there's testing issues and, and, and then the consequence of a positive test. Um, but again, that, that, you know, that, those discussions are, are uh, I think, primarily being held at the league level and, and we'll get direction from them at some point, I know. Um, but we've, we've got time. That's that's the fortunate thing here. As of now, we're not quite sure what the protocols might look like, but we've got a fairly decent idea of what the Saints roster will look like. How were you able to shape it during the offseason despite the limitations in terms of face-to-face -face meetings and workouts? Yeah, well, look, I think, first of all, we were uh, you know fortunate that we haven't had a lot of changes. Um, you know, our coaching staff is intact, the core uh, personnel on our team were under contract. Um, we did have, you know, some things that we needed to do in free agency, and we were able to accomplish a number of those. Uh, we were able to get get a couple guys re-signed, some guys re-signed that are important to us uh, to keep our team intact. And, and look, we've got a veteran club, a, a good mix, actually, of veteran players and younger players that uh, um, understand what it takes to be successful, understand what they have to do uh, in an off season in order to come back and be ready to go when, once this thing gets started. So I think we were fortunate in that we had, you know, less change than most teams or that a lot of teams had. Um, and so this is, this is probably, uh, um, you know, I think we're in a little bit of an advantageous position relative to that. Now, Mickey, the outside free agents the Saints were able to get specifically talked about the program and having spoken to people about the program that the Saints have been able to install, despite not having a chance to see the facility or anyone on the grounds face to face. Yet they still felt comfortable enough with accepting a contract offer from the Saints. What does that say about the program that New Orleans has been able to establish? Well, um, look, we've been fortunate enough to, to uh have a lot of wins over the last three years and and look players want you know i think i think more than anything else they want to win we we certainly take pride in that uh, we pay attention to you know our locker room and and um, i think the facilities themselves look they're important it's important to have um 
first class facilities. I think we have that. Um, you know, we, we, we pay attention to it. We try to add something every year and we may not have the newest and brightest and shiniest, but, uh, but, but we, have, we have a great facility. The general consensus has been the previous two seasons, the Saints had the best quarterback room in the NFL with Drew Brees, Teddy Bridgewater, Taysom Hill. Now the team's got Drew Brees, Taysom Hill, Jameis Winston, and the rookie Tommy Stevens. Is there a feeling from within that this still is as good a quarterback room as there is in the NFL? Well, you know, I don't know that because, look, we have, you know, every year's new, every year is different, and and uh, look, I, I like, I like, obviously, we like the room going into the season, and yet that'll be determined by by how we perform, you know, over the course of the next, uh, um, you know, next few months or the months uh, when the season occurs. So, uh, but we like we like the room going in. You know, obviously, we've said a lot of good things about Taysom Hill. We like his future. We like the things that he's done for us, and and uh, believe he can be, a, you know, a real good quarterback in this league. And you know, Drew, Drew's accomplishments ex- speak for themselves. Um, Jameis Winston has done some really good things in our league, and and we're excited to have him be part of that room, and and excited to get to know him, and 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 hopefully uh, uh, add to his resume. So, but going into the season, obviously we we you know we like the position, we like the room, um, and I would say that's true for a number of positions on our team. Not being able to track players physically, not having them on site, how challenging has that been for you guys? Well, look, it's it's been different, that's for sure. I don't know that challenging is the right word because, look, our, our position coaches and, and uh, you know, our coaching staff in general, does they do a great job of, of um, you know, communicating with the players during the offseason, having, uh, uh, you know, conversations about, you know, where each guy is and, and advice. And, and our, our players are great about taking care of themselves and taking care of each other. Um, being in great shape in the off season, they all have they all have a routine, and uh, that routine's been been somewhat disrupted. But but look, I, I'm confident in the character of our, our guys that when we when we uh, assemble for training camp, I'm pretty confident that they'll be in, in great shape and be ready to roll. Now, Mickey, we can never count out the Saints in terms of roster additions, but do you feel like you guys are pretty set? Or are there still a couple of areas where you feel like there might be someone out there that you can get who can help you out? Yeah, I, I would say this. Look, we're always looking. We're always looking to see if we can add a piece, um, add a player that can can contribute. Um, yeah, so I, I wouldn't say we're done. I would say, look, we're still looking, and, and there's, there's avenues that uh, that we'll explore over the course of the next few months, and, and we'll see if we can we can help our team. When training camp comes and when the season starts, have you considered what football will look like without fans, given that that's a possibility? Yeah, look, it's hard to recreate the atmosphere that exists and the excitement that exists when you have, um, you know, fans present. That, that that will be different. It will be, uh, um, yeah, unprecedented, really, uh, in terms of in terms of the NFL. So, uh, yeah, we thought about it, and yet. And yet, look, I'm not ready to say that that's going to happen yet. That, that, again, that's those are discussions that are happening at the league level, and and we'll, they'll get and process a lot of the medical information that comes out, and, and you know we'll see what happens. Well, thanks, Mickey. We appreciate having you. We appreciate you sharing your time with us. 